Did you do anything in that St. Joe's game? No, I was strictly playing defense. Delonte West was tough. That's a pro. Oh my God, that step back with that. Oh wait, hold on. Forty minutes. You didn't even get a rest. No, I you played, played the whole 40, game. Six for eleven from the field. That was me. Twelve points, six rebounds, five assists. Oh, I was nice that game. <laughs> I thought I ain't getting double figures. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Nate Bargatze, the Be Funny Tour. I mean, Chuck E. Cheese is rough. I don't know if you've been there in a while. <laughs> they look like they're trying to go to business and they can't. All new material. They filed for bankruptcy and they're still open. <laughs> they called Blockbuster and they're like, how do you get out? We want out. Nate Bargatze, Friday, May 31st, FedEx Forum. Tickets available at FedEx Forum Box Office or Ticketmaster.com. Produced by Outback Presents, Nate Bargatze, the Be Funny Tour. You saw with four seconds for the win. Yes! Marcus, one of the more competitive people you'll meet. Yeah, you lose. That willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And a big part of that's why the, the team was so successful, because he had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus All. Did I invent this, Loki? Did you? I spent years calling my ex producer Cowboy Carson, and now Beyonce. She decides she, she wants wind? to. She wants to dabble in country in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter when she's doing her next concert, okay. and she says, "Hey, my new album's about to come out." Uh, inspired. Cowboy Carter, I inspired just, by the Gary Parish Show. Shout out GP in yes. Memphis. The Gary Parish Show live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. It's time for Grizzbait, a full court press of highlights, insights, news, and scoops covering the Grizzlies and the NBA. Catch up each week on the latest Grizz Buzz with regional and national insiders locked in on our squad. Running Point from Grind City Media Studios, our host, Jarvis Greer. Hey, everybody, the long NBA season winding down here at 191 Beal. We're right across from FedEx Forum. You saw AutoZone Park in the distance there. Baseball started up, but the NBA winding down. Got some hot news off the press we're going to share with our most talented crew on hand today, including we have with us right now from the Daily Memphian, Chris Harrington. His articles are definitely as in-depth as you can get. Uh, he's wearing the Stax hat, which I've been trying to be get off of him for a, a while now. But, Chris, we welcome you back into the studio always great to be here with you guys thanks it seems like when you come in man you bring the cold weather it's kind of chilly I, I, I had to get my hoodie back out today i thought i was done with it for a while yeah i know and being just getting off the road and uh, his arms are tired from flying in we got the guru of grind city media michael wallace himself and you got the uh, mem hat on which i'm gonna try to get off of him uh later in the day but uh michael we got some great uh, news just uh, hot off the presses as they used to say here uh, adrian wojnarowski of espn just dropped the bomb another Woj Bomb, Jerry West and Vince Carter are going to be headed to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Of course, they have Grizzlies ties, having VC having uh, just about not quite ended his career here, and uh, Jerry West resurrecting the Grizzlies and turning them into a meeting, meaningful franchise. Well, I'll tell you what, Jarvis, I'm, I'm shocked because I thought Jerry West was already in. I did too. Right, as a player, at yeah. the very least. And maybe this is... Yeah, I think he is in as a player. A play. Okay, yeah. so maybe this is... So this is, is his work as a general man. Or, or, or overall, right? right? But even then, like his best work came more, well, you know, a, a while ago. But, you know, kudos to him. I didn't have a chance. I wasn't in Memphis uh, when he was running the show here, so I didn't have a chance to interact with him here. But I did run into him in previous stops uh, covering the league. Vince Carter is a guy that, you know, if you've been around the league the last 20 years, You've covered Vince Carter, so uh, absolutely deserve for Vince. And, and I'm just, you know, when I think about these guys, I think about what I know about them as people, um, more so than basketball. And to have conversations with Vince about the the actual uh, performance arts center and gym that he had a chance to build at his at his high school is, yeah. in Daytona Beach, mm -hmm. and how much pride he has to have his name up there. 
And when he talks about how he went back to North Carolina to graduate in the middle of a playoff series, right. uh -huh. where he caught a lot of heat for when that. When he was with Toronto. Yes, when he was with Toronto. I mean, those are the stories that resonate most with me, with Vince, even though he had an incredible dunks and an incredible career. You know, Jerry West went on to a consulting role after the Grizzlies with other teams. Yeah. But the Grizzlies was, was the last place where he was in, like, full control of basketball Correct. for a franchise. And probably the last real stroke of Jerry West genius was hiring Hubie Brown to be head coach, which is something no one saw coming. I don't think anyone else would have done but Jerry West. And then Hubie goes on to win coach of the year. Hubie Brown, of course, coming out of the broadcast booth to drop into the position of head coach for Memphis. I remember Hubie Brown as coach in the ABA with the old Kentucky Colonels when we used to have a, a team here, the Memphis Pros Tam Sounds, during uh, my uh, senior year in high school. And uh, it was something to see that uh, I remember Hubie, he had Artis Gilmore and Louis Dampier and that crew at uh, with the Kentucky Colonels, and yeah, they they won ABA titles. And how's this old guy gonna come in here? I was thinking, cause you know me, I'm uh, I'm I'm working at uh, WMC Action News Five at that time, and thinking that I remember this guy when I was a kid coaching in the ABA. Now he's <laughs> he's been in the broadcast, but I've been watching him do uh, yeah. NBA games yeah. on television, and he's gonna come in here. But boy, did that work! It's a real yeah. bold move by Jerry West to do that. And yeah. then one of the coach great, of the year, right? He yes, won, he, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that, 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 that one yeah. of the one yeah. of the most chilling and and just uh, awe-inspiring moments of any time in the Grizzlies franchise is when that that day at the pyramid, it was during a playoff game when they they awarded uh, Hubie Brown the Coach of the Year award, and it was thunderous, yeah. thunderous yeah. applause for for Hubie Brown, and he uh, had really really was very very gracious yeah. in accepting it, and we we really are, are fortunate that they have. Jerry West, Hubie Brown, Vince Carter, they all, you know, stuck their toes in at Memphis and had something to do with this franchise. Also having something to do with this franchise, one of the cornerstones of the core, of the core four, having a big day coming up uh, Saturday here at FedEx Forum as the Made in Memphis retirement of Mark Gasol. His jersey will be retired here and uh, will go up in the rafters alongside Zebo. Zach Randolph's the only other one of the core four that has his number up there, number 50. Number 33 will go up on the walls here. And uh, Michael Blevins did a great, uh, did a, I mean, an absolutely fabulous uh, uh, documentary on it. Chris, you're, you're in it. And I think I got a little voice uh, cameo in there somewhere. <laughs> but uh, let, let's give you a little peek of the, the Made in Memphis, Mark Gasol. A video. Uh, Memphis is uh, seeing everybody has to feel that this is their city and they have to fight and play for it. He wasn't supposed to be this great center. He had to work for it. Those are the scars that make you who you are. He's, in my opinion, a Hall of Famer that is the best of us. The Grizzlies to this day wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus Gasol got to a point where I realized for Memphis to have a chance to win a title, I gotta be out of here. Like an adopted Memphis son, that's what he meant to the city. The city meant that to him. The city of Memphis loved him like he was one of their own. If you're a Grizzlies fan, not a Grizzlies fan, it does, if you have anything to do with Memphis and if you love basketball and you love the city and the whole grit and grind thing that, that this place is built upon, you need to watch. The, I'm saying you need to watch this video. I watched it. Uh, it's, it's like a feature-length movie. It's about an hour and 45 minutes. But I'm telling you what, it, it has every bit, all the graphics you saw in there. I laughed. I cried. I, I had emotion. I had that. It's all in there. And, uh, Chris, of course, you were here when, during the yeah. uh, – uh, Mark saw when he was brought in basically as an afterthought, people thought, uh, in the trade for his brother Powell. And it, the, the whole thing ended up turning the, the whole basketball world on its ear. You remember um, Pop, Greg Popovich, I, I thought he was going to blow have an aneurysm just going over. Why did the Grizzlies trade Pau Gasol? The one thing that they have good, and they trade him for Mark Gasol. And it's just like... The world was on his ear, but boy, it did turn out great for Memphis. I, I've made this case before, including I, include, I made it at the time of the trade before Marcus All ever played an NBA game, and people have never wanted to hear it. But Marcus Saul, people remembered Marcus Saul as like the chubby kid from Lausanne. From Lausanne, that That's was correct. four years before the season in which the Grizzlies traded for the rights to Marcus All. He won MVP of the second best league in the world as a 22, 23 year old center. The Spanish ACB league. Right? And as I wrote at the time, the four previous MVPs of that league. 
Andres Nocioni, Luis Scola, Walter Herman, Juan Carlos Navarro, they had all come to the NBA and been really good NBA players. And so when Chris Wallace was trying to tell people at the time, like, he wasn't saying this guy's going to be an all-star, none of that. He was saying if he was in this coming draft, he wouldn't be a second-round pick. He'd be a, like a late lottery pick. That wasn't spin. He was a 22-year-old center who just won MVP of the second-best league in the world. It was not a shock that Marcus was good. Yeah, and uh, Michael, you were uh, you weren't here in Memphis at that time, but you got to see what was going on for afar. What was the scuttlebutt happening when uh, you heard of the Pau Gasol Marcus Gasol trade? I, it was the same thing, you know. So when you, nationally, everyone sort of fall, fall, falling in line with what right. Mark was saying, right? Just like a few years after that, nationally, everyone fell in line with. When uh, you know when, when the Chris Ball Paul trade to the Lakers was next, right. like why did this have to happen, right? Why couldn't you, you know, why did the league stop Kobe Bryant from getting the guy that he needed to get him back where he wanted? So you you have all of those things. We did feel like at the time, you just earmarked basically uh, a championship for the Lakers, mm -hmm. which it did do. Yep. But what people didn't understand and do the research as Chris did was that they're not just getting crumbs out of this. It's going to take development, but they had a, a, a top-line prospect. And really, when you think about it, they got it for cheap. Because if you <laughs> yeah. have to do that trade with both of these centers at their peak, you know, it's one of those things where I'm not sure, you know, I, I, I'm not, if you had to pick one of the two, depending on what you had around both of them, I'm not sure it's automatic that someone would go pow over Mark in that situation. Yeah, so. and just look at the graphic yeah. there. The Grizzlies franchise leader in minutes played, field goals, rebounds, and blocks. Three-time All-Star, three-time All-Star in the NBA, two-time Olympic silver medalist with his native Spain. Plus, he got an NBA championship after he was finally traded by the Grizzlies to the Toronto Raptors, and he got that run and got a chance to be drunk on the bus there yeah, with right, everybody yeah. at the parade and just, just having a great time. Second Grizzlies player to have his jersey number retired of course, that's coming up this weekend in the game uh, Saturday night here yeah. at FedEx Forum. And, uh, you know, I'm going to say one thing about that, you know, the trade, at least, when mm -hmm. that brought Mark here. Um, Everybody knew that the Pau Gasol, he, although for some people he wasn't their favorite Grizzly, he was the most skilled Grizzly, mainly because, you know, Pau was a skilled big man, mm -hmm. uh, typical of what you would expect coming out of Europe. Uh, his skills were unquestioned, but he was not the burly, you know, mix it up in the weeds and get rough and tumble. And that, that's what Mark was. But like you said, everybody remembered Mark, his Los days, yeah. as, you know, as a 340-pound guy. You know, he could shoot threes and, you know, he could block shots. But, you know, if he played college basketball like they were – John Calipari was head coach of the Memphis Tigers in the, here then. He had interest in Mark, but Calipari would have killed him. I mean, he would have killed him. In practice, and there was, there was no way that Mark would have survived that. And he made the decision to go back to his native Spain. He got on the fish diet or whatever ever else that they do right. there in Barcelona where he grew up. And he slimmed, he changed his whole body, and he became a different person. And we got a chance to see a little bit of what he looked like when the Grizzlies had that uh, preseason scrimmage yeah. exhibition game with them I, over in uh, Spain. I think, you know, the Gasol stuff, there was reason – to believe he was going to be good. There was not necessarily reason to believe he was going to be an all-star and all-NBA mm -hmm. player. So setting the Gasol, the Mark Gasol thing aside, just briefly, I think the, there are two reasons why that trade was reacted to the way it was. One was the relative um, reputations of the two franchises involved, right? The Grizzlies had never won a playoff game. Mm -hmm. So it was the highest and the lowest. And so that colored the way people – the same trade happens between, like, Milwaukee and Detroit. It's not reacted to the same way. And the other thing was, I think that was early on in, I think, media and people within the NBA understanding the financial implications of trades. A lot of that was about clearing cap space and letting them go out and trade for a Zach Randolph and that kind of stuff. Right. There, there, were, there were definitely auxiliary yeah. arms mm -hmm. and tentacles to that trade. And, and, and again, but in large part, the perception was Mark Gasol was the afterthought of everything else that they had to do to clear the space to get to Azebo, right? Mm -hmm. He worked his way to becoming right. who he is. And the one thing I, I admire, and I've been around Powell as he became a champion with the Lakers and also around Mark when he was here in the, with the Grizzlies when I got here eight years ago. And Mark has this sense that no matter what the perception is out there about him, he's locked in. Right. Like he's not influenced by what people think. The Powell noise is does a little not more sensitive to right. those things, right? Yeah, 100%. And he's also a lot more sensitive to his teammates. Mark is an unselfish guy, but he will dictate what he needs his teammates to do, whereas Powell will sort of acquiesce, mm -hmm. you know, to that. But, I mean, it's going to be a great setup, man. Both of them are going to be in the building here uh, on Saturday. And fans, man, you got to show up. You got to come uh, because this is the giveaway for Saturday. I have it right here. It's the Mark Gasol album with all of his best 
press conferences, videos, uh, you know, sound bites and everything. So it's, we did something similar for Zebo when Zebo went up into the Raptors. Mark did it the same way. So this kind of vinyl throwback, grit and grind type thing uh, is going to be important, man. And it's, I, I can't imagine what, well, I can because I saw it with Zebo. Yeah. What it's going to be like in that building uh, Saturday night. But you're also going to have, you know, uh, Mark's coach that got him to the championship. You know, Nick Nurse is mm -hmm. going to be there coaching the 76ers that night, seeing Mark go up to the Rafters. Joel Embiid, who was one of them. And people don't understand, like, Mark Great counseled. He counseled mm -hmm. Jokic and Embiid earlier in their careers when they would play against the Grizzlies. He spent moments before games with them and after games with those guys, telling them certain things that he knew about how to be a professional in this league, particularly coming from – you know, overseas in, in a way. So it's going to be uh, an emotional night, man. I can't wait for it. And I think Mark really sort of set the road a little bit for, for Jokic, yes. you know, in terms of being able to impact the game at that size, but without the athleticism, with the passing, with the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark Mark was a better defender. He was not as aggressive offensively. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to see if Marcus all came along today. Would he be willing to, like, take on as much of a load offensively as Jokic is willing to? He may have been as great as he was. He may have been even greater if he'd been willing to take on all of that. That's you know? a great point. Well, the thing about that, the album you held up there, it has Memphis to the bone on the bottom of it. And that's – Mark was Memphis in the fact that he basically came over here at 16 and grew up here, you know, basically. He grew up here. He would go run with his buddies at Lausanne, and they would go up to uh, North Memphis and watch Tresvent and uh, Northside play, you know. Uh, in their, in, in no, Pals Escalade, according in, to the movie. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, that, that, that had to be a scene rolling up there over by uh, the Purple Bears of Tresvent, rolling up yeah. in the Black Escalade, and uh, here come uh, uh, a guy that's 7 feet 2 inches tall, 340 pounds, followed by some other black dudes, you know, from the yeah. hood, basically, because they were all from North Memphis, yeah. and I yeah. guess uh, maybe pals from North Barcelona. I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's really something the way the way that that came out, and it, it all brings us up to like our question of the week. What is your favorite Mark Gasol moment with the Grizzlies? There are many, and they are so hard to choose. But Michael Wallace, we'll start with you. Do you have a favorite uh, since you were watching basically from afar? What is mm -hmm. your favorite Mark Gasol moment? My favorite individual Mark Gasol moment was in L.A. hitting a shot in the Conor McGregor. Ah, uh, the Conor yeah. McGregor walk right, right. off the court. That's the yeah. iconic Mark Gasol because I remember he used to drive people crazy in the locker room, his teammates and staff, because he was always talking about McGregor, like McGregor. <laughs> McGregor. And, and, and I remember that was around the time when Floyd Mayweather humbled him, right? Mm -hmm. So you had, it was funny. You had this dynamic of, you know, most, mostly black, Players and teammates and staffers going for, <laughs> going for Floyd, Mayweather. Free boy Floyd, and, then, yeah. and then this dude just doing the McGregor dance. And he also had, uh, like, Mark. That was a walk-off winner at the Clippers? That was a walk-off winner at the Clippers. Yeah. He had the McGregor, and I think maybe that same season, he also showed up at games with the uh, uh, Johnny Cash, the All Black. Oh, yeah. Right? He was, like, uh -huh. in the Johnny Cash at the same time he was in the Conor McGregor. And one of his celebrations opposite. was the play guitar thing, yeah, yeah. which was the Johnny Cash. Strong yeah. guitar. characters yeah. and personalities. So that, I would say that would be my favorite Marcus All moment. Mm -hmm. So th this sort of hints at my answer, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I sort of cheated when Michael Blevins, when I, you know, gratitude to him for letting me in these docs. But when he sort of asked me about it, I struggled to think of moments with Mark the way I did with Zach and Tony Allen, who will have his day in the mm -hmm. future. And with Marcus All, what I think of are sort of recurring moments, moments that repeat. And it's not like a big shot or a big game. It's the way he would pick up the ball and kiss the ball, give the ball a smooch after a play. Mm -hmm. The way he would cross himself, the way he would pat himself on the butt, which either he stole from Zach or Zach yeah. stole from him. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And just the way he would play, like I remember just the snap on those two-handed bounce passes when mm -hmm. he would hit a cutter, Tony Allen going to the basket. Or sometimes when he's doing a high-low feed to Zebo, he would almost roll it like a bowling ball. Just a lot of the little stylistic stuff he would do and the way he would express himself with the, with the way he played is really what I think about with Mark Gasol. Well, I, I'm going to give you uh, – and those are all great. I'm going to – it's so hard to pick out one. I'm going to give you two on court and one off court, if I can do Dang. that. Okay. That's three. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I know three, it's I just one. I, I, I cheated. Mark Jarrett's going to cheat even more. <laughs> I'm going to cheat a little bit. But, hey, I'm, I got the big mic here. So I'm That's a, true. I'm a, you, I'm you in control. You got the executive ball. privilege. Uh, like, okay. The, the one was the Courtney Lee inbound pass he caught at the buzzer. You remember that? Uh, there was like point. 
three seconds left on the clock. All they could do was throw it at the rim. They designed a play to have uh, Mark circle around and then drop out to about the dotted line. The pass was right there. He caught it in midair and put it in right here at FedEx Forum. Game winner got mobbed by all of his teammates, of course. And then the one in the, in the last uh, playoff series for the Grizzlies against uh, San Antonio where he and uh, Mike Conley had the little give and go kind of thing and Mark hit basically the game winner on, on a little run up. In uh, overtime. Yeah, in overtime. One of the greatest games here at FedEx for That was a game when it was just going back and forth, back and forth. Kawhi Leonard hitting big shot after big shot. The Grizzlies coming down and, and it was just it's one of those things that you will forever remember with all the growl towels up, you know, people holding up the growl towels. But I guess one of my favorite moments though is, is off the court um, we live downtown, and uh, Mark Gasol, we go to Tug's Restaurant. You know where it is on Mud yes. Island. And uh, my wife and I, we're in there eating, and then in comes this dude, like, it, it blocked out the sun, walking in. It was Mark Gasol. He ordered pickup and came in to pick up his, his mitter, and everybody goes, hey, Mark, what's going on? He goes, hey, how are you? How are you? You know, and it was just, it, but, you know, nobody's mobbing him, and he's not trying to duck the public or anything like that. I think he lived on South Bluffs at the time, came over to get his food, said hey to everybody, and then, you know, walked out, and it was just like a cool day. Hey, Mark Gasol's here, you know, and it, it was just one of those things. He was one of the peeps, yes. and that's yes. that's what I really appreciated about Marcus. That's really what I appreciate about, about this city, as far as you know, the guys that come in here. A lot of the players that come in here, the you know, some that I don't like to play. Rui Hachimura he said, "I do not like to come play at Memphis, whatever." <laughs> but it's like the guys that play here, they like it, and they, they live here. You know, whether they're here permanently or just have the home here during the season, you know, they don't get bothered. They, they uh, can come in, go to work, go to the grocery store, uh, do whatever they do, have their kids, some of them that did, and, and, they, and they genuinely enjoy living here in the city. And that, I think, all, you see, like, a lot of them are still around. Zebo comes back a lot. T.A. is already here and had done stuff with the Grizzlies. And that's just, you know, it's one of those things where this place grows on you, and it's grown on them, and that's why they're the core four, and that's why these jerseys are going up on the wall. Wouldn't well, you agree? Well, I mean, I look at just what you, what you just stated so eloquently there. Um, resonates not just with the greatest of Grizzlies, but also people who have come here and, and have adopted this place as home, right? Mm, mm. You're, 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 you're a native, right. true and true, right? Um, you're a native, true and true. Chris kind of came down here, right? Yeah, a little. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a in native. I grew up in Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, he, you know, and then me, I came from somewhere completely far away, right? Mm. But the thing about it is that all three of us that got here in different sort of ways, um, can all identify what makes this place special. And you have to almost be here and experience it to understand it. Because from afar, Memphis is not number one, number two, number six choice mm -hmm. to, for anybody to want to come. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day. And we're all big enough to realize. And, yeah. and you can understand that. But when you, but there's nothing you can accomplish from here. Correct. If you give it a chance to get here. Mm -hmm. And that's the way. It's I a better at. place to live than a place to parachute in for one night looking for a hot club to go to. There it's not that, you know. <laughs> there you go. Right? That's a great way. To, that's Although a great you way would to have some it. recommendations, though. Sure, sure. Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> but, you know, like you if I were a 25 year old NBA yeah. player and I'm just looking for somewhere to spend one night and go out, it's yeah. probably not top that's of the list it. for that, right. you know. Right. And we it's don't have to be that. Right. You know, can't right. everybody be that? We yeah. we are yeah. what we are. And you got the MEM on the cap. I love that cap, yes. by the way. Yes. He might not have that cap on. I'm, 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 I'm going to find one somewhere around here for you. I'll find some. <laughs> All yeah. right. So now the Grizzlies, now you just got off the road, but the Grizzlies are still on the road. Yeah. And they are tonight, they are in Milwaukee to take on the Bucks. And well, you know, Bucks 47 and 28, they're ranked third in scoring in the league. That's a healthy average, 120.4 points per game. They make all kind of threes of 14.3 per game. They're fifth in offensive rating, 12 and five since the All-Star break. A lot of people were getting on the new coach, but they're doing pretty good right now. Doc has got them kind of rolling. Top six record in the NBA over that span. And, of course, the Greek freak himself, Giannis Antetokounmpo, lone NBA player averaging plus 30 points, plus 11 rebounds, plus six assists, plus one steal and plus one block per game they seem to have it all and the Grizzlies are going to try to take it from them tonight Chris Harrington yeah you know if you're looking forward from tonight to the playoffs that Bucks team probably not as good as it was at its peak when it won a title a few years ago but also might be good enough mm -hmm. like if Boston falters at all like they, they got Giannis and, and, and they've got you know some talent around him and 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 that that team is still a threat 
And, you know, it's a chance to see, you know, Jaron Jackson, who I think is, is, is set to play. Jaron Jackson and Giannis on the floor together. It's always a good time. That's a definitely a good time. And that 40-piece that, yeah. that Jaron put up was pretty good. And he's played his 65 games now. Do you think he'll play tonight? He'll play. He's he'll in play. the lineup. He's he is in the lineup. He's, he's in position to play tonight. And, um, you know, we'll break down Jaron a little bit later in the show. But, you know, to Chris's point, you know, there's no, like, if Boston slips, they're not, just like in the West, if Denver slips, somebody else can like that you could throw five teams in a hat and i wouldn't be shocked who comes out of it from that standpoint um but one thing i will add to the to, to the information that was in the graphic is that uh since uh the show started the bucks have ruled out dame lillard chris middleton and uh patrick beverly all three of those guards Pat, yeah, wing, all wing, yeah all okay. of them are out with various injuries or in, in middleton's case uh, for maintenance, injury, ma recovery, maintenance. I still so, trade for their, uh, <laughs> their yeah. injury list. So those guys hours. are out. Giannis yeah. is expected to play. Mm -hmm. And if he does play, to go back to that graphic, when you look at his numbers um, averaging what he's averaged, they're, nobody else in the league is doing that. No. And he's not getting as much MVP consideration as some of the others. But the way stats are today, you can almost carve out any – you know, a uh, version of stats to say, this is the only player in the league yeah. doing this. Mm. That, 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 right. That's very popular on social media these days. Yeah, yeah. the extrapolation yeah. Is, right. uh, is, is, but that tells you, man, this is the healthiest MVP discussion and race that we probably had in, 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 in a couple, you know, several years. Yeah, this guy's all over the place. And the Grizzlies and the Buck, they took on each other back on February 15th. And mm -hmm. that was a pretty good matchup uh, as far as, uh, you know, the way the, the Grizzlies were able to play yeah. at that time. But, you know, it's, it's, there's so many different – how many lineups have the Grizzlies had now? 42 45, starting? 45, 45, I'm behind. You got to keep up. You got to keep up. 45. I, I, got, I, I took off my shoes and socks, and I had ran out of fingers and toes to count it up on. I, I, had, I had a real quick – I had a uh, – you know, because I have a piece up at Grind City Media now on Jaron Jackson Jr. and just getting that threshold to 65. But uh, I had to do the, the numbers again. We're approaching – the Grizzlies are approaching 500 combined games missed to player injuries, 500, right, in this season. Uh, 45 different starting lineups, 31 different players who have suited up to play a game for the Grizzlies this season, and 21 different players who have started at least one game this season. So that tells you the the uh, the attrition, man. That's, I mean, that's it blows away the, the NBA record, I think, that the Grizzlies set, right, Chris, a few for, for, years ago? For a number of players, so they set it, and then, 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 then they equaled it, and now you know, they're <laughs> right back again. But but that, that missed games thing even undersells it because, you know, once you trade Steven Adams, those those games don't count anymore as missed and games. You're still, <laughs> that's but, crazy. Yeah. And you're still totaling them because, yeah. you right. know, certain guys, like, at the time, no one under, no one knew or figured Marcus Smart was gone with a season ending injury. Right. At mm -hmm. that point. We I knew Ja was hey, three weeks, he's gone, um, you know. Yeah, and, and and but that that happened in Jan what was it, January? January? Right? Oh February. Mm -hmm. well, it was it was late January, okay. I want to say. Um, because by the time we got to Boston, when they played Boston in February, he was already out. He's out. Because mm -hmm. he didn't play. That was his first time talking about the injury when he went back to Boston. But you know, when you add Marcus and the the Dez and then Fortunately, BC is back now, so his meter stops. Right. But you just had it's, it's been one of these seasons, as Jaron said, he's never seen anything like this before. Uh, and uh, speaking of things we've never seen before, we've never seen this break before. It's coming up right now. <laughs> when we come back on Grizzbeat, we'll talk about news around the association. That's after this break on Grizzbeat. with some sad news coming out of the WWE. Michael Jones, also known as Virgil, passed away. He's a Virginia Union alum, so he graduated from an HBCU. He got his start in Memphis, right? Oh, man, you're absolutely right. He started in Memphis in 1985. Get all of your HBCU sports and culture news by tuning in to HBCU Huddle with CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. Real country music with Cody Johnson live Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best. The Leather Tour with Cody Johnson with special guest Justin Moore also featuring Drake Milligan. VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson we were without internet from 11 in the morning until what ended up being around 8 o'clock at night. I'd be the first to go in an apocalypse. I just would not even know what to do. Chris is over here like, 
who needs internet anyway? Let's just be one with the land. And I'm like, frantic. I'm like, I can't do anything. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. Hey, Grizz fans, made by Grizz fans for Grizz fans. 191 Collabs, presented by Hennessy, celebrates Memphis designers and showcases our city's unique voice and vibe through hyper-local Grizz gear. Shop the Zach Myers with Nurture collection by Zach Myers coming up Friday, April 5th, when the Grizzlies take on the Detroit Pistons. These limited edition threads only available in FedEx form on game night, so buy your tickets today for access. You can go to Ticketmaster.com or visit Grizzlies.com slash 191 collabs for more info. Hey, Grizz fans, it's time for the NBA's top storylines, and we got plenty of them to get to. I can't wait to unpack what we have in unpack store for pretty here, good. Man, After it's just getting lot, off the road. It's a lot like to get that. to, but what we're going to start with, NBA Players of the Week. DeJounte Murray from the Atlanta Hawks. You look at what he's done this week for the Hawks as they try to hold on to that. And they pretty much secured the number uh, 10 playoff seed in the Eastern Conference right there in the play in. 28 points a game, 5.8 rebounds, 10.3 assists. And he got this based on his two game, leading the Hawks to a two game sweep mm. of the Boston Celtics wow. last week. So kudos to DeJounte Murray and this guy right here, Luka Doncic. Just when you thought the MVP race was down to two, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Jokic and, and SGA, this guy says, hold up. Hold my beer, hold, hold my brew, hold, hold everything, and watch this trick shot that you see from Luka Doncic. Most incredible shot I think I've ever seen in a trick NBA arena. Guys, off the scoreboard, <laughs> off oh. the backboard, and in. And then Jason Kidd obviously has some, uh, some comments about Luka Doncic and just how magical his run is. What did you see on that one underhanded shot when the uh, shot clock was running out? Well, we've been lucky enough to be around him for three years, and we've seen him kick the ball in. Uh, we've seen him shoot from half court, full court, sitting in a chair. So um, to see him do that, I don't know if – I think a lot of people got excited, but I think at the same time, everybody, that's Luca. You know, he's always uh, able to make tough shots. Um, Again, Picasso, when you give him the paintbrush, he's going to do something special. And that shot was pretty special. Point guard Picasso, what do you make of Luca? <laughs> and are these the most incredible selection of shots that you've seen in uh, the NBA? Well, they are. They're they're up there now. The one off the scoreboard that that's just like you know. I wanted yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, do, do that in a game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they they probably call off top somebody. Right. Well, no, we got to get the replay. You can't do that. Uh, I, that was impressive. That reminded me of the Larry Bird. Uh, Michael Jordan contest back in the in the commercial in the, the McDonald's commercial yeah, yeah. 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 they're they in the old Boston Garden I think they were shooting, shooting through off the, the girders and yeah. all that and all that business but that that underhanded thing that that's just crazy that's improvising at its best Luca hit a game winner in FedEx Forum he a couple sure years did. ago yeah, where he was just about horizontal when he shot the ball so I mean we've seen that up close and it, it, he had every one of the 37 or whatever it was points he scored in that game they had to have yeah. because that game the Grizzlies were giving him everything and of course Luca and I, you know I like Luca as a player because mm -hmm. he see he gets it the banner with the fans mm -hmm. you know he likes being the bad guy in the opposing arena but he has fun with it though yeah. you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. he's not like you know oh god we hate Chris Paul and the Clippers and they're evil people no he's just a guy he's coming in yeah he's trying to beat you behind yeah. and you, most of the time he does but he has fun with it, and he knows it's a game. And it's like like the, the time this year when they came in here, and I, mm -hmm. I forget how many points he had. but He, he and Vince going, Williams were. Yeah, Williams. They yeah. were jaw jacking yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, and I think yeah. he got into it a little bit with T. Morant on the sideline mm -hmm. there. And it, But it was all in fun. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is why you play, and this is what makes sports so much fun. This is why I am so glad I, I 
lived long enough to see an NBA a team in my town that has Memphis across its chest because you bring in the best of the best, and a lot of the guys get it. No, no question about that, Jarvis. And as you were talking about Luca, I also thought back to he did a big shot to beat the Kings. They went in there and swept oh, the Kings. Mm -hmm. And then he looked over at Vlade and said, you should have drafted me. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. if you remember that draft, that yep. was the Jaron draft. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Uh, th these guys, I mean, Luca went third. Bagley went second. Second. Everybody, yeah. I was in the sequestered room when that lottery oh. hit. And everybody in the room at that time went and congratulated not only uh, the Pelicans at mm -hmm. the time, but they went to Vlade and said, hey, yeah. You got the best foreign guy that we've seen in a long time oh, coming yeah. in this league. And he celebrated. And then they picked Marvin Bagley. It's they picked like, Bagley. Anyway. Mystifying. <laughs> it doesn't make any the, sense, The only man. thing that makes me mad about Luca is that he never looks like he's in a hurry. You like, know, he's all, he always looks like he's under control. Though. He just, everything and slows he never looks, down. He never looks like he's in shape. Top no. shape, either. Uh -uh. But he he's he figured out a way. He went to the Doncic school. Yeah, Luka he's, school, he's right. figured out a way to, uh, to master that. Um, but speaking about, uh, about coming back and mastering something, can Joel Embiid, now that he's mm. back, this guy came back from in-season knee surgery to come back and help his team. He returned, had 27 points last night in a victory over the, the shorthanded Oklahoma City Thunder, but he couldn't have put up a better comeback performance. 27 points, uh, seven rebounds, but more importantly, he had the game ceiling, game ceiling steal at the end when he ripped um, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the Oklahoma City, Josh Giddy, mm -hmm. and then secured the win on that side. Chris Harrington, when you look at what Joel Embiid is capable of doing for the Sixers team, he was in the middle of a MV, another MVP run. Now he's back. Can he get them out of the play-in territory and back into the top six? I mean, he was even better at the start of the season than he was last year when he won the MVP. Yes. I mean, he looked really good in this first game back. We'll see, you know, when, when the reps build up, if he still looks as good getting into the playoffs. But if he's the same player he was early in the season – I mean, this is what I was saying earlier about Milwaukee and about Boston. Like, Boston's had a great season, dominant season. They could look up, and they don't have the best player on the floor in, in series, multiple series of Joel Embiid is himself. And so I, that is not – if they can get healthy, and DeAnthony Melton's been out, they've had some other stuff. If they're healthy come playoff time, that's a team you don't want to see as a 7-8 seed in the playoffs. So they can get they got to get to that, but if they can get to it. I, t I totally agree with you, Chris, because their their ancillary players are really really good, and if they're if they are if they are healthy, I mean, with Joel Embiid, the only thing I was worried about him, I saw him when he went down, you know, and it's like, oh my goodness, that didn't look too good, you know, that looked like right. this this might be yeah. this might take a while. Well, because he tried to play on it. Remember yes. those last that's, that next couple games, he tried to play on it, right? And, and we it, played a clip like, on Grisby when he just wobbled to the floor mm -hmm. untouched. Yeah, and it's like yeah, that that don't look like that's gonna go too too well for him. And then he's a big guy too, you know that three weeks he's got out. I don't know what he's eating. You know, is he going to come back and, you know, have a little bit more of the uh, a little rotunda there around? The, <laughs> but, you know, he, he looks good. He looks in shape. He, his little step backs were, were fine. He was running the floor fine. I didn't notice a limp. Haven't had, you know, that kind of surgery myself. You know, meniscus surgery, think, oh, it's just meniscus. You tear that. It's just cartilage. It's not. Man, that bone on bone, that, that, that mess hurts. I yeah. will say that. Yeah. And it doesn't stop. And it just takes time for you to kind of – there's got to be some scar tissue or something or other to build up. Around. That's why guys keep going and getting it cleaned out because it's like that. It, there's nothing there anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that's yeah. – so if Embiid can come back, he, you definitely have to say that he's back on the MVP list and, um, and he's uh, – the team is back, you know, a betting favorite to win the title. Well, he won't, he won't be able to get back yeah, on the MVP no, list. Not okay, there won't be, enough, there won't be game. enough games there. Right. But his impact can still be at an MVP level. Right. We'll see uh -huh. where it goes. Because guess what? Joel Embiid and those Sixers will be here in Memphis on Saturday uh, to face the Grizzlies. And we also want to get back, speaking of uh, you know nothing here anymore, mm. I mean, Charlotte is cleaning house, right? <laughs> yeah. Michael Jordan sold the team mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of the year or during the, earlier in the year. Then Mitch Kupchak was kind of you know phased out and stepped aside. And now, today, the Hornets announced that Steve Clifford, the coach, will be stepping away at the end of the season. That was the worst kept secret in the NBA. We all knew it was heading in that direction. Um, it just never worked out for Clifford there. This was his second run. His first time there, he got him to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They were an eighth seed before the play-in came in, and he got him, you know, sort of competitive. This time, they just went super young. Uh, LaMelo Ball has been hurt. They've mm -hmm. had the issues um, with Bridges and everything on and off the floor. And then they're just young right now. So what can Charlotte do? 
to sort of hit this reset button and start back over. They got the GM, they got a new owner in place, they got the new front office in place. And now, what should they be looking for, Chris, as a coach? Well, I think the good news there for them is that Brandon Miller, their rookie, looks like he's going to finish probably third in rookie of the year behind Wimby and Chet Holmgren. Mm -hmm. He looks like a real building block, an all-star level wing kind of player he can be. Um, to me, said, the most important decision for them is not the head coach decision, it's the LaMelo Ball decision. Like, yeah. it's been a few years now. He's an exciting player, but he misses a lot of time. Not a lot of winning going on. You wonder if it's more highlights and stats than, yeah. than conducive to winning basketball. And I think they have a real decision to make about are we moving forward with LaMelo Ball as the centerpiece of our franchise or not. And to me, that's more important than their head coach hire. Great point. Great I, point. Think Great they're, I think they're still paying uh, purgatory for the old owner that went crazy, lost his mind, and they George lost Shin. the team. George Shin yeah, because yeah. he, that yeah. dude was just yeah, – he had totally lost yeah. it. And uh, and they had everything going for him. They were at the, the Charlotte Coliseum, twenty, the largest arena in the league, twenty three thousand every night. They had Grandmama and all those players uh, playing there, and they have not gotten that back. And I don't see them getting it back. Any, they're going to be like Sacramento. Huh? They're going to be in the wilderness, wilderness for a while. Steve Clifford, I think, is a really good coach, as you mentioned. He got them to the playoffs a couple of uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, you know, having some. That Bridges thing, that's a coach killer. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do about that. And then when your roster's hurt, well, we see, you know, what, what happens when your roster's hurt. You're not going to win games. And they haven't won games in a while, and I don't see – they got LaMelo Ball, but what else do they have, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you, know, you, you talked about the, the player that's on the Brent, come-up. Brandon Miller, I think, yeah. you get out. Yeah. He's that, on the yeah. come-up, yeah. That's yeah. the one sure thing to me for them. Yeah, that's the one sure thing. But right. you don't see, like, okay, say like the Grizzlies, they had, you know, a, a player here and a player yeah. there and a player yeah. here that were good players that – the whole – they made the team better, you know. I, I can say this having – you know, I, I was embedded with the Hornets um, for a while, you know, back, you know, early, early in my career. And I remember feeling like they've never had their ownership, front office, and coach aligned. Yeah, on they the never same had. page, right. Someone was always inheriting something else. Right. Uh -huh. And they never really – and that, that, that forced them to struggle to find a vision. You know what I mean? And then when Jordan was kind of playing fantasy league with the roster, yeah. that didn't help, right? No. I mean, like he thought, he thought bringing in a, a backcourt. Just think about this backcourt, Kimba Walker and Lance Stevenson. What is that going to do, <laughs> do for you right. in the NBA, right? Be no fun, floor spacing. Not not, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. And, and I remember being at the press conference when that was the backcourt that they wanted to don't roll too, out Don't talk too season. bad about Lance, though. I you love know, Lance. I, I, love, I love Lance and I love Kimba, but it just didn't work. So, yeah. you know, they have a lot of work to do. Um, they're young. And I just think Clifford at this stage of his career, yeah. that wasn't the right, right fit for a veteran older coach to come into that kind of younger team. We'll see where they go from there. I think that's four uh, NBA jobs that are going to be open uh, uh, with interims. You still got Brooklyn uh, with Kevin Ali as an interim there. Washington still has an interim. And, uh, and now uh, Charlotte as well, too. So we'll see where that goes from there. And last but not least in this segment here, we break down the Grizz Beat Weekly Power Poll. Um, what I have right here, the biggest jump, the biggest jump for me uh, was the Mavericks moving all the way up. They were the best team in the league over the last two yeah. weeks. Unbeatable, that 9-10 game winning streak uh, propelled them way up. Now they're in position to probably try to go for a home court seed at the 4-5 if they can get it in the West. Um, and then you had some, some tumbles there, a couple of tumbles there, biggest tumble for me. The Pelicans had it going, and then they got hurt. Like mm -hmm. some of their guys got nicked up, including Brandon Ingram, and they took a couple L's there that was uh, – including a blowout loss the other night to the Phoenix Suns. So when you guys look at this power poll, and we'll leave it up, uh, does any team jump out or resonate in, in terms of where they're trending up or down? Chris? I'm just really interested to sort of re reiterate a little bit what I said earlier. I'm really, really interested in the Celtics. The Celtics mm -hmm. are going to have the best record in the league. They're running away with the East. Uh, yeah, I think they're top five offense and defense. All the fundamentals tell you this is a super elite team and that mm. is a team that, that typically will win a title. As good as Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are, they are not the typical best player on a title team. <laughs> and so you wonder about the ultimate upside of that team. They're so deep. They're so talented. They're so balanced. But they don't have the guy mm. in the way that Nikola Jokic is the guy. Giannis was the guy. You know, peak Steph Curry, peak LeBron James. T History tells us when you win a title, you got that guy. Yeah, I don't know right. if they have that guy. And Did, then to that point, even peak KD, when Steph 100%. had to, say, Steph had to st take a step back, Clay took a step back. So you had to. You're talking about cut. top 20 players yeah. all time. Yeah, you know? cut number one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about. I think. Yeah, I think Boston is as good as they want to be, and uh, sometimes it's just not good enough. 
-hmm. But sometimes, you know, this year it might be. Uh, those three teams there at the top, any one of them could win. SGA and the Thunder are, are the ones, to me, they're kind of the wild card because they're still kind of young yet. You know, to do it, I, they don't have that scar tissue built in that uh, some that the Nuggets had when they were hurt that year. They were really, really good, but they lost. You know, Jamal Murray and yeah. and uh, and but now they they've won one. They're ready to go. Celtics have been there. Uh, they're ready to go. Uh, the Mavericks is just Luka Doncic has just been incredible. Uh, I'm looking down at the bottom end of that. That Lakers at number ten, and then you still got Golden State. Uh, what are they at eleven? Yeah. And they're uh, what a game and a half. A well, half no, no, game they're at half? ten. This is this is just a power poll. Oh, yeah. But they're at ten in the West. In the West, in yeah. In the West, so they're they're secu they're basically going to secure yeah. that number ten. So spot. I that that down there. I mean, who's going to want to see when? Whatever happens out of the play-in, who's going to want to see either one of those teams come up? And they could beat, on a good night, they could beat any one of the teams at the top. We're going to look up and see a playoff series in the West, maybe more than one, where you have a team that looks better on paper, like Oklahoma City and Minnesota, mm -hmm. that's a little bit younger, a little bit less proven. They're looking across the court. They're seeing LeBron James. They're seeing Luka Doncic. They're seeing Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. And that could get real interesting in a hurry. It is. It is. And that's what's going to make this play-in and playoffs so intriguing. We got a little bit of that last year. Because, again, the Grizzlies were two, the yeah. Lakers were seven. And it That's was, right. That 7-2 didn't seem like an upset. That seemed like the no. betting favorite were the Lakers. You oh, know we, what I mean? From that we standpoint. said, don't let us get the so, Lakers. Yeah, don't let yeah. Us get so you're going to see a lot of that yeah, almost same in thing. every single matchup, man. I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to tossing this back over to Jarvis Greer when we get to the third segment and the final wrap-up segment of the show right after this break on Grizzly. You saw with four seconds for the win. Yes! Mark is one of the more competitive people you'll meet. He yeah, ain't losing. That willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And big part of that's why the, the team was so successful, because they had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus Gasol. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. This is an actual good shoe. Yeah, it looks like, like a good shoe. real good shoe. What yeah. you think about him, uh, KJ? She likes Cheetos. <laughs> like Cheetos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Cheetos? You like Cheetos? For kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. For kids, For 1, kids, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And honestly, if I was still playing basketball, I like I played in brightly colored shoes. I, I wore pink shoes a lot of the yeah. time or purple shoes. Like I like that. The Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. The Grizzlies have parted, partnered with Club Tales to bring excitement and Grizz swag to a local retailer near you. Stop by one of the selected locations and enter to win the Club Tales Ultimate Game Day Experience, which includes not one but two courtside tickets to an upcoming Grizzlies game, access to pregame shoot around, a postgame on court photo, and more. Just visit grizzlies.com/clubtales for locations 
and details. All right, final segment here on Grizz Beat. Time to talk about the week ahead for the Grizzlies. Of course, tonight the Grizz are in Milwaukee to take on the Bucks, And then Friday night, a home night against the Detroit Pistons. That's on Friday. Then Saturday night, we got the big matchup against Joel Embiid, quite possibly, and the Philadelphia 76ers. And that is on Mark Gasol, Jersey retirement night right here at FedEx Forum. Boys, what you think about this uh, three-game swath right here? Well, I'll, I'll start off real quick. The Bucks are coming in here. Well, the Grizzlies are going into Milwaukee with the Bucks playing on the second night of okay, the back-to-back. Yeah. It's, now, was that the game that was added? Which they one lost, of those games well, that no, was no. added? The, the Bucks just lost last night to the Wizards, the okay. lowly Wizards. Okay. So the Grizzlies might catch them sleeping, particularly with all of those guards out of the lineup. We'll see if the Grizzlies want to push forward for that one. Um, the Detroit Pistons one is the one that's added. So this is the yeah. third time the Grizzlies have played the Pistons this year because they had to pick up a, an additional game uh, for the play-in tournament. You Once think, you get uh, eliminated from the play-in tournament, the that season tournament. short. I mean, in-season tournament, yeah. You yes. think Jaren, uh, Jalen Duran will find his tooth by the time <laughs> yeah. that? that? He got was hurt awful. the first time. Like, he gets hurt every time uh, they yeah. play Yeah, like he had an ankle injury. <laughs> Turned his ankle, yes. he missed six weeks. Yeah. It was a really that bad. That was against the Grizzlies. Yeah, it was against, was the, against Grizz. the Grizzlies. Yeah. And the Grizz won the that game. And he went out early. Yep. And yep. they weren't able to get it done. And then he and Jaron Jackson Jr. butt heads in the last meeting. Boom. And Not out comes bad. one of uh, Jalen Duran's teeth. Yeah. And yeah. he was out the rest of the game. And so uh, in comes another former Tiger. And it went the uh, Grizzlies, Jaron Jackson Jr., went absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the Sixers on Saturday. Yeah, I'm interested in that Sixers game. Obviously, the Marcus All Night it, yeah. it sort of overwhelms everything. Right. But that's a pretty good, like you know, opening act for the Marcus All ceremony afterwards, is to see that really sort of intriguing Philadelphia team potentially to see CMB and get a, you know, the only time they're in town all season is the Eastern Conference team. So to get a look at that team as they're gearing up for the playoffs, I think is an interesting game. And then you'll have the Marcus Hall stuff, not only the ceremony after, but there'll be stuff trickling in throughout the oh, game yeah, in terms of video segments and what have you. So that whole night's going to be great. All kind of people are coming in for that game. Mm. Uh, there's all kind of people. Like, Mark is already in town. And then there'll, there'll be, uh, like, Hubie. I don't know if Hubie's going to be here, if he's going to do another video message like he did. They wanted to get Mike Conley here, but uh, but they're Minnesota's on the road. Yeah. Yeah. So it's playing. Uh, yeah. I Powell, think they're on the West Coast. Pa Powell's here. Yeah, yeah Powell's here. Yeah. You, you, yeah. I was, my wife and I were lucky enough to be in Los Los Angeles for Powell's retirement uh, uh, ceremony yeah. at uh, Crypto.com Arena, and uh, it's still Staples Center to me. But you know, we we went to see the Grizz on that back to back. They played the Clippers and the Lakers, and you talk about there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And right. Powell is such a great speaker. You know, he he really. He's really heartfelt in everything he says, and it's going to be interesting to see how it contrasts. Mark was there for that, mm -hmm. and it's going to be interesting to see how that contrasts here with uh, with Mark having to be the one to stand up. Mark was never one to really like during interviews. I don't think he's going to soak up the adulation quite as easily as Zach did a couple years ago. Oh, I, Zach I don't was think, like, give it to me, yeah, baby. Mark, I love yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, Mark, I'm loving Zach it. loved it. Mark, Mark, I think, is going to show a little bit of discomfort with that. Yeah. That's just given his nature. He's probably going to be a little, you know, aw oh, shucks, you know, I, I did what I do, and <laughs> and yeah. I play the right way. That was his favorite uh, say. Got to play the right way. Yeah. That's one. Maybe they'll put that inscribed to the, along with grit and grind. Oh yeah, that grit and grind on the ring. Yeah, that was awesome. I uh, did. You were you the one that pointed that out? I, I, I apparently I broke the news to Marcus All. <laughs> because when it came out of a Reddit thread, like some fan had like, freeze framed a video to yeah. discover it, and I DM Mark. This was a few years ago, and asked him to, to verify if that was true. And his response was, "How do you know that?" He didn't know that it was publicly known until yeah. like I DM'd him about it, yeah. and I, I interviewed him last week and did a story. I, when I talked to him again, he basically said that he didn't that at the time he didn't tell anybody. He didn't mm. tell Mike Conley. He didn't tell anybody. He didn't know how anyone was going to know what was inside his the ring on his ring. finger. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's why we have Chris yeah. Harrington on because he knows all and he tells all. Uh, when he feels like it. Uh, we're just so, so glad to have you here to sleuth all that stuff out. Uh, and we got to talk about Jaron Jackson Jr., though. We talked about uh, how he and uh, Jalen Duran butted heads. But I tell you what, he was butting everything else out of the way uh, in that last game against the Pistons where he put up a 40-piece for Memphis in the win. And we had the graphic up there just for a second. 65 games played. Now, that's the minimum to qualify for NBA postseason awards. We'll ask the guys what they think about that, which ones he'll make. Averaging a career high of minutes 
played at 32.1. This is for a guy that we're always afraid is going to foul out. There's always in foul trouble. His assists are up. His steals per game at 1.2. Very good. He's the reigning NBA Defensive Player of the Year and a two-time NBA All-Defensive Team honoree. What do you think now, now that he's got the 65-game minimum, where will he fit in the, in the postseason awards for the Grizzlies? Chris Herring. I mean, because of that minimum, and there are a lot of guys who won't hit it, like Joel Embiid, who we were talking about, I still think the, the, the kind of season the Grizzlies had, it's going to prevent Jaron from making, mm -hmm. you know, all NBA or all defense. I think he should still be in the conversation for all defense. He has not been as good defensively as last season. Certainly his stats, his blocks per game are down a lot. But his, his defensive stats are still pretty good. I think he's top five, top six in the league in steals plus blocks. The Grizzlies' defense as a team has it's been like incredible. top 10, top 11 all year. For the record, it's yeah. just crazy. And he's the best defensive player on that team. So I think he warrants being at least in that conversation. But I don't think he has much, much of a chance to make those teams. Yeah, I, I want to say uh, all defense goes first and second. They don't have a third. That's right. Right. And that's the like, – yeah. all NBA has a third team. Well, okay. And I think he's scratching the surface possibly if there was a third team all defense. Right. But I think for him more so than anything – uh, this is the third straight year now where he's played at least 63 games, yes. right? 63 or more. Right. So this year he's at 65. He was, he's playing tonight, so that'll be 66. Last year he was at 63. The year before that he was at 78, right? So the first three seasons of his career, he didn't even crack 60. No. So I think just having another year where he can say, hey, I've been more durable, I've been there. What he's doing right now this season, and, and to Chris's point, I've heard him on other shows talk about this, and he's like, yes, Jaron is the numbers and, and everything that we showed in the graphic is all true. But when you dive a little bit deeper, his efficiency is, 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 is cratered a little bit offensively right. um, from that standpoint. But he's having to do a lot more in terms of usage and things that he not, he's not necessarily had to be comfortable with. But I think ultimately Jaron is planting a seed this season when he goes back to the negotiating table and say, OK, give me, give me the super max, give right. me the max. Mm -hmm. And if he can be durable, and, and show that, okay, I showed up at a season when everyone else had a chance right. to throw it away. This is why I'm an anchor. This is why I need this, this, this next big lucrative contract because people might overlook. He did not get anywhere near as much as he could have gotten, and he has sort of a de-escalating number yeah. on right. his contract. Mm -hmm. I, don't think he, I don't think he offers or probably deserves the discount. Uh, this next time around, if he can stay healthy and do this, I think that you know what you know what they say: best ability is availability, mm -hmm. right? And he has proven to be durable over these last few seasons yeah. here. And even you know, there's a couple times he got hurt, nicked up. Oh, is he going? No, he comes back, coming back in a season where why are you playing? You know, everybody wants to put him in bubble wrap. I do want to put myself in bubble. We're not going anywhere this year. That's a fact. Everybody else is hurt, but he's still out there grinding away. Pretty much every night, unless they tell you to, unless they tell him to sit down. I don't think he's going to and saying, I need to sit out. They're, they're basically telling him, you need to sit. We're going to play somebody else tonight. And, uh, and he's been out there, and for the most part, he's been getting it done because he's had to be the one to get it done. And, you know, that's three 40s this season he's mm -hmm. put up. Yeah. Jaron to me is like a high-end stereo. There's so many different <laughs> levels. He, can, he does so much on both ends of the floor. And the trick has been figuring out what's the right balance of yeah, like yeah. of of, of self creation of play starting, play finishing, scoring inside, outside defense. You know, getting all. I mean, he's an all star level player. Like, however you do the levels, but yeah. you can sort of he can sort of be a different kind of player yeah. depending on the surroundings, depending on what's asked. You got to have that you know? equalizer just tuned in. Yeah. There's been a couple of nights that we've seen where it's like he, the shot wasn't dropping in the paint, and you, you could see that kind of frustration over. This season has just been a slog on every. But then he comes back the next night and he's, you know, putting up 25 and getting, you know, four block shots. Well, it's a key point right there, real quick. Like this trip started Orlando, right. uh -huh. four points on one of nine shooting. Yeah, worst wouldn't. game offensively of the season, four yeah. points. Can we destroy that tape? By the and way, and then the next cool. game, 48 hours later, 40 points, mm -hmm. seven rebounds, three steals, three, you know, three Two blocks. blocks. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he had like he completed the, you know, he went from one spectrum to the other. So. You know, again, it's, I don't know how many more games we're going to see him over this last seven. Mm -hmm. Tonight counts as one and maybe a couple more. And then he can probably sort of, you know, downshift and let some other guys take, take it the rest of the way. But, you know, this is a season where, you know, it, it, it's been an encouragingly productive season for him in terms of growth. Because now you got to wonder, is he going to embrace the five? And if he truly embraces the five, that changes the dynamic of, do you prioritize getting a rebounding power forward mm -hmm. to play alongside him and, and that kind of dynamic? So the fact that he embraced playing the five, which started in FIBA and, and continued on here, 
you know, there's still some growth there, but I think he, he shows some encouraging signs. All right, right now we're going to have to embrace getting on the road because that has come to the end of this uh, week's edition of Grizz Beat. We want to thank our great panel. Of course, Chris Harrington with the Daily Memphian. And Chris, we appreciate you being here yeah. as always. Yeah, and thanks for having me. One of these days you're going to come in and that Stacks hat's going to be missing, buddy. I'm <laughs> tell you right there. And, of course, the guru of Grind City Media himself, the great Michael Wallace, as my grandson would say, glad to have you back in town. You're going to be yes, on sir. the call uh, coming up in one of these games here over the I weekend? I will be. I will be. Yep, yep. Um, I, I, Elliot, I'm, 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 Elliot's got the next two coming when they come home. Okay. And then uh, I have uh, another couple after that, man. But, you know, I also want to give an, another kudos, shout out to Chris Harrington, man, because of everything that, you know, we're going to carry this show into the offseason and right. the draft and all of those kind of things. But uh, for him to show up every time we called and asked and, and contributed, man, you're a treasure in this community. Yes, I appreciate indeed. that. Across all the uh, platforms that you're on. Um, you do it a professional way, man. Like you do it the right way, you do it a professional way, and you do it an objective way, right? And whether you're whether you're review, reviewing restaurants and, and <laughs> recipes or NBA basketball, man, you just have a quality about your work that that I deeply respect, and we definitely respect you for that. I Second appreciate that. that. Second yeah, that, yeah. So we get some food advice from you, too. After you get <laughs> the show. I'm getting a little hungry. All right, that's it for this week's edition of Grizzly. Grizzlies tonight uh, against the uh, Milwaukee Bucks on the road in Milwaukee. Two home games back-to-back -back this weekend, Detroit and, of course, Philadelphia. We want to see your face in the place right here when Grizzly returns next week, 2 p.m. See ya. That's game. Thanks for running with us for another episode of Grizzbeat. Join us each Wednesday at Grind City Media for all the latest insight and analysis on the Grizzlies.